Hello everyone and welcome to another STAT 437 lecture video. In today's video I want to talk through a little bit of the theory related to accel accelerated failure time models. Now <clears throat> as I was pointing out in the last lecture, a lot of the theory here is actually theory that we've already discussed in getting to the point where we could present these models, right? So we've already discussed uh, the location scale family, we've already discussed sort of the likelihood derivation, um, and sort of how we might be able to go about once we have a parametric model fitting these things. But what I want to show you today is first write down the mathematical specification for an accelerated failure time model and just make sure that that's super clear from the lecture last time. As well, I would like to uh, discuss sort of how those quantities relate uh, between the implied survival distribution and our baseline survival distribution or the, or the distribution that's implied from the um, error distribution that we choose. So with that, I'll open up my whiteboard here. And we can start by talking about the mathematical specification for an accelerated failure time model, right? So as a general rule, we're looking at a model which is going to um, be composed of a linear predictor and an error term. Right, and so typically we think about this linear predictor as being xi transpose beta, right? But in theory, you could use something else. But for now, we will consider a set of covariates that we care about, multiply that by some coefficient that we don't know that we're trying to estimate, and that gives us this linear predictor, right? And so it's sort of the mean of the distribution, right? Because if we uh, then write down that yi, which we'll just treat as an outcome for now in and of itself, is equal to eta i plus wi, and wi in this case is an error distribution that has mean zero, right? And so then if we take a look at what the expected value of uh, yi is, and say more specifically, the expected value of yi given xi, well, we know that eta i is just xi transpose beta, right? So this first term is gonna be xi transpose beta. And then we have plus the expected value of wi given xi. Right? And sort of by assumption, this expected value is going to equal zero. And so then we get that it's a mean uh, of xi transpose beta, right? Which is what we had seen in standard uh, regression models, but we're sort of getting the same thing here. And so then the question is, you know, where are they arising from? And the point is that instead of working with y, we actually start with some time to event data, right? We have t. And we just choose t to be such that some transformation, and typically it's going to be the log, so it'll be the log transformation of t is what we define to be y. And then that distribution is such that y can be uh, decomposed into some sort of mean parameter plus some sort of error distribution. And then what we're saying is that if we know this model for the expected value of y is equal to a to i, then we can write this down as a to i plus w i and fit this as a regression model. Right? So the key, the key assumptions here are one, that we have um, log t is a location scale family. Right? We need that the expected value of yi given xi equals a to i. And we also technically need some sort of independence between um, yi and xi. More specifically, what we want is that the expected value of wi given xi to be equal to zero. And otherwise, if it's equal to something else, then we can't reliably estimate a, um, a coefficient on our, or an intercept on the model, but otherwise that's okay, right? And so this sort of gives us our mathematical specification. And then we're going to assume essentially that all individuals in the population are IID distributed in this way. Okay, so that's sort of the math mathematical framing. It should be quite familiar because it's basically what we have in linear regression and in uh, GLMs and whatnot, right? And so once we have this mathematical specification, what do we get out of it? And so that's sort of the next piece that I wanna discuss, right? And so if we think about it, we're, we're dealing with say log T equals uh, eta plus W, right? And so if we wanna sort of shift this back to the scale of t to think about the survival time itself, well, t is then going to be e to the power of eta times by e to the power of 
w. And so what we can do is if you think about an individual who has eta equal to zero, right, if eta equals zero, then we can have sort of this t0 term is going to be equal to e to the w, right? And so we define t0 to be equal to e to the w. And we're thinking about this as some sort of uh, baseline time, some sort of normal time, right? And we're going to think about deviations um, from this. So then t is equal to e to the eta times by t0, okay? And so then, you know, we start to think about um, what happens when we have uh, e to the eta taking on different values. So if e to the eta equals 0 0.5, then what we're kind of saying in this case is that the person ages twice as fast as normal. And what we mean by that is the person is aging twice as fast as they would be if they didn't have the covariates that had made e to the eta to be 0 0.5, right? Um, and so by multiplying the baseline time by 0 0.5, we're saying that they're aging twice as fast. Similarly, if you had had e to the eta equals 2, then they would age half as fast. Right? And so then if you're thinking about it, when t0 would be 1, if e to the eta is 0 0.5, you have t equals um, 0 0.5. If e to the or if t zero is one and you have e to the eta being two, then t is going to be two. And so it's about uh, whether you're aging half as fast or twice as fast as uh, other individuals, right, over the same period of time. So that's why we're calling this an accelerated failure time model. By the way, is because the way that the uh, covariates actually have an impact is by accelerating or decelerating the failure time. They sort of speed it up or uh, slow it down, right? And so being able to interpret based on uh, sort of these values here, that's a that's a useful useful skill to have. Now, the other piece that I want to know or note is that um, we can sort of talk about everything from the distribution of, uh, let's say, e to the uh, w zero. Okay, um, so. What do I mean by this? Or, or, you know, rather, maybe we'll keep calling this uh, T0 here, right? So let's say that we want to know what is the survivor function of T, right? So the survivor function of T, uh, which we have defined as the probability that T is larger than some value of T, right? But if we plug in what we know the expression for T is that we just wrote down, well, that's the probability that T0 times by e to the eta is greater than t. And if we just rearrange, e to the eta is positive always, right? So then we have this as the probability that t0 is greater than bringing the e to the eta over to the other side. We have e to the negative eta times by t. And this right here is the probability that t0 is at least that much, which is exactly the survivor function of t0 evaluated at e to the negative eta times by t, where uh, s0 of t is the survivor function for t0, right? And so what we can do is we can start to relate the distributions of uh, t0 to the distribution functions of t, right? And so um, what if we wanted to get the, uh, if we wanted to get the density function, right? Well, the density function we've seen, uh, let's say f of t, this is equal to the negative derivative of the survivor function. Okay, so we had seen that relationship before. And so if we look at it, that's going to be the negative derivative of s0 here, and we're differentiating with respect to uh, t. And so that's going to be uh, negative s0 prime. Keep the inside the same. We're using some sort of chain rule here. And then we differentiate the inside, which is e to the negative eta, right? Well, based on the same rule here, this negative derivative is exactly equal to the density of t0. So that's going to be f0 e to the negative eta t times by e to the negative eta, right? And so right here, that's going to give us the density with respect to the original density. Now, if we wanted the hazard, well, the hazard function is equal to the density divided by the survivor function, right? And so we can look at this density here. It's uh, f 
f0 times by this uh, multiplicative term. And the survivor function is s0, right? And so if you look, we're going to have a ratio of the density of t0 to the survivor function of t0, which is exactly equal to the um, hazard function of t0. So that's going to be the hazard function of t0 at this e to the a to t times by e to the negative eta, right? And so then we get this relationship. Um, and this all stems from noting that t is equal to uh, uh, e to the eta t0. And alternatively, you could have gotten this from t0 equals e to the negative eta t. Right? And then you could have used a normal change of variables or whatever. But I think that reasoning it through it in this way sort of uh, gives you all of that. And so those were the results that had been presented in the lecture, right? And uh, all of this is all you need to know to sort of work with all of the distributions here. So, you know, in general, the idea is going to be we uh, take either an error distribution or a survivor time distribution, and we specify some covariates that are of interest, and that's a mean model, a log linear regression model in the same way that you would think about any other uh, linear regression model. And then once we've sort of pulled that all together, we can see that there are these built-in relationships. And all of these are sort of stemming from this idea of the accelerated failure time model. So we are taking failure times in sort of the baseline case when uh, eta would be zero, and we're scaling them up. We're accelerating them or decelerating them. And that gives you this nice way of interpreting what the coefficients in that model are doing. So in the next video, we are going to actually see ourselves fitting some model to uh, some of these models to data and we, you know we'll talk through sort of all of that uh, then if you have any questions as always please reach out and ask me and all of these notes are available on the course website of course and i will see you all in the next lecture